Hey guys, I don't know how many of you have this kind of chop saw or any really any kind of chop saw and what kind of table you put it on. That's the trash can down there. So it's a, it's a pain in the rear end every once in a while. Uh, you have a long board to stick out. You have to have somebody holding it or something, a horse or something out there. And then uh, you end up losing one of your stanchions for this. You know, I mean, it's just a pain in the rear end. Okay, um, inspired by Christmas in April, a project I was on uh, just this past one, somebody had a device out there that they made for this, and uh, they said, hey, Bill, you can go ahead and make one, put it on YouTube. And, uh, and I'm going to say thank you to Scott, the guy that uh, came up with the idea, all right, and gave me permission to do this. He has a newer one that has a laser on it, and one thing I noticed is he has these grooves down there. There's one there and one there on the back. That's what we're going to use to have this ride along its own workspace and you're going to love it when it's all done. I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, now my dilemma here is that I'm going to be using my chop saw to do the cutting of all the pieces of the wood. So it's going to be hard to dismount them from this uh, plywood and put it over here on the two uh, two by fours. But I want to show you something here now. I drew marks uh, centered on uh, on the um, the screw, okay, or the mount, and another one over here centered, coming all the way around. I used a um, right angle measuring thing to uh, to uh, line those out. Okay, so uh, from that line to this line is uh, eight and a half inches. So I came over to both sides of this. All right, so uh, I I have uh, I have it on the center over on that side. I come over here to eight and a half inches. All right, do the same thing to the other side. Now, I don't have two horses at this time, so I have these uh, metal things I use for a horse. Can't find my other ones. I know they're around here someplace, and I'm not going to go out and buy another set because I know once I do, I'll find them. It always happens that way. <laughs> okay, you can leave a comment about that. So I have this guy that's uh, about the same height. So that's where I want these to do, to be at. So the next thing to do is to uh, to uh, make the spacers that go in between that keep them at that. And what I've, my friend did is uh, just screw them in. I'm going to glue them in. I'm going to uh, screw them in so they are more permanent. And then I th I think I can actually keep them up there on the rail up on top uh, for storage. So I don't think they're going to warp at all uh, being on there, especially since I have brackets all the way through uh, supporting it. So the next thing to do is cut the pieces that go on. Three of these pieces of plywood, this is 2x4x8, by by or $2.99 a piece at Ace Hardware. Okay, uh, I'm sure you can get it cheaper someplace. This is uh, the year is 2015. Prices can go up or down through, over the years. So uh, kind of cheap, a little cheap project. I already have the screws, the hardware, the glue. So you might have to purchase those too. All right, and remember, pre-drill holes when you do this so you don't split the wood. Okay, you don't want to split the wood on this, all right? Should come out really nice. And we got to make uh, end pieces at the very end so, uh, you, know, our, you know, our chop saw doesn't run off the end. Okay, maintaining eight and a half. Okay, uh, the center is seven and a quarter. The center part there is a seven and a quarter inches. So that's what you're going to do. Two of those, one on each side. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I stood. I just have these standing on the on the ends. This isn't even all the way at the very end of it. This one I'm going to work on first. We're going to put a layer of glue up there first, and then I'm going to put the other one on top of it. And then I have. Uh, I'm actually going to use deck screws. Um, I'm going to drill in. I think this is a uh, seven sixty fourths. I think I'm right on that drill bit and what I want to do is uh, put two pilot holes in uh, it just makes it easier for the deck screw to go down inside okay I don't have clamps big enough to hold these together so uh, we're going to use uh, deck screws I have them already I'm not worried about uh, carriage bolts or anything like that I don't care about all right so we're going to do one side at a time and uh, you know each side of this at a time and do one side uh, you know do do them together so they just uh, you know you're on, you don't have to keep flipping them back and forth now it's important to have that one on that end over there so this one is flush at 90 degrees. Okay, you need to, before you start drilling uh, your holes or putting your screws in, you need to feel, uh, just go down and make sure that it's actually centered. We're not doing the bottom yet, it's important to have the top centered. And then uh, before you actually drop the, like this is off a little bit, I need to move it back just a little bit. Okay, and hopefully the holes aren't too far off. Okay, and definitely side to side. You don't want things sticking out on the sides, so just uh, have it really flush. 
uh, all the way around. So I need to use two hands for this. But just make sure they're flush before you start drilling and uh, putting, putting your screws in. Okay, this is what I dislike a lot. All right, I made sure that these boards are as straight as possible, but I didn't look for splits on the ends. This one goes all the way through too. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill that in uh, with the glue. Just let the glue seep into that while this is uh, going on. I made a video about how to do this with Gorilla Glue too. If that, so it's not a total loss. You don't have to cut them off. Okay, um, so uh, as long as it doesn't go all the way down. The other side looks just fine. I have these screws set down uh, all the way in. And that glue is going to dry in there. It's not. I don't think it's seeping out anywhere, so it's uh, doing good. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and uh, I think what I'm going to do is just flip it over. Do this one that's on um, on the stand here because that thing rolls and uh, not very stable at all. Oh, what a mess! Okay, screw that screw in, and the wood split going down. All right, so I put some wood glue in there, and we'll let it, I, I just uh, let it soak all the way through, get in there, clamped it down, and I'll just leave it like that. I'm, I'm not worried about that drying away right away. Probably I'll have the same thing. I swapped the wood around, so I have one on one end, and I have the other one. The other one's right here on this one. So, uh, so I, I just can't believe that. I shouldn't have a problem at all anyway. Uh, if there is a problem, you can always put another screw in the middle. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you have your wood is okay when you buy it. All right, put your tape measure up there. It's eight foot across, so you're going to go to the three foot mark and the five foot mark. So three foot marks right here, and you're going to put a cut another piece and put it on the bottom, same size. All right, do your best to get them kind of centered uh, when you put it in. What I found is uh, when I put the first screw in, uh, there was a gap right there. So what I did is I backed it out. And screwed it again and it snugged up nice all right so I might want to do that the second screw went in just fine do that to all of them two screws on each side that's about what you should be looking like at this point point. and at this point we could probably move over our our chop saw to this guy well I ended up taking some of the uh, hardware off you need a, a pair of needle nose to get these these guys off to get the rods out I was missing a screw each on either, on these so now they're gone I'm leaving the plates on in the back. Okay, uh, this actually looks uh, pretty good on here. I have rollers over here, so I don't want to move it too much. All right, it is snug. Okay, it's snug on this side. Okay, uh, on both sides, it's not perfectly centered. All right, so it's hitting the outside, uh, which is okay because after a while, moving it back and forth is going to uh, wear it down anyway. So uh, just uh, be tolerant. I'm going to play around with it, uh, cut the other pieces. I'm going to show you how to cut the pieces that actually raise up to the same level as this. Okay, and I think a 2x4 is going to fit right there, so that's going to do good. Alright, now this is a 2x4, a piece of it. I'm kind of level on top, and you see the gap right there. So if we bring it down all the way, it won't be level up on top. You can see that right there. So you want to be as level as possible, so we're going to have to bring that up about a I think that's like an eighth of an inch, or maybe a quarter of an inch. Now what I did is I uh, cut cut this piece right right here to uh, seven and one eighth, so uh, so it'll slide easy on the inside. Uh, all right, I don't want it to be as stiff as those other boards in there, as uh, snug. Now the idea is is that these will be level, okay, and even with that. Now, when I was doing this, I was finding out, wow, it's just slipping right through. So we need to put something there to actually stop it from falling through. And that's what I'm doing over here. I cut small blocks that could be any size. I marked it with a pencil. And then what I did is, uh, let's see if I can simulate it a little bit here. So the block, so make like this is the block, that little, little block right there. I uh, made this to where it's level up there and put the block on there and then clamped it into place with some glue. All right, so go ahead and do that. Let the glue set. I did that on both sides. Not so worried about the back. The back's longer because we need something to grab it to pull it out and uh, and um, and move around. All right, and now I do have it going long on the bottom a little bit. You can't see it, but it extends to the bottom of the two by four, so it doesn't run off the. End. Well, this is what the contraption looks like. Definitely pre-drill before nailing, okay? Because I split uh, the smaller pieces of wood. All right, so uh, let me get a tape measure. We'll do some measuring here, show you. Now what I did to uh, hammer this guy in up on top to get some, uh, I used the two by four underneath. 
and that worked out very well. Make sure you uh, pre-drill in the right spots though because I was too high and I would have missed the uh, 2 by 4 under, underneath. I used number 10 by uh, 2 and 3 quarter uh, nails. Okay, and I've already uh, tested this so it is 10 inches on, on one piece. All right, another piece is uh, is about seven inches, uh, just short. Let's uh, let's take that uh, take a quarter off. So it was six. It was uh, six and uh, uh, seven eighths. It looks like, but uh, I had to adjust that, okay, because I was a little too high, so I had to chop it down a little bit. Uh, just do seven and work with that. Now this piece right here in the middle. Let me turn it sideways. This guy is uh, uh, four and a, four and a, an eighth. It looks like. All right. So let me show you what this actually does now. When it sits in here, okay, it moves freely. You pick it up to go over the center part, okay. Uh, and what happens when it gets down to the end here? It won't go off the end, and it's kind of tight down at the end. There, there we go. It won't fall off the end when you're pushing it, and it can move around freely back and forth. And when it's over here your piece of wood is actually level. So no matter how long it is, we'll make two of those. One for each side, and you can also pick up the one from that side, put it over on this side if you have another, you know, a really long piece of wood. These are put on to stop it from falling through. I had to do one on each side. This is longer so you can grab it, all right, when you don't need it, or if you need to pull it out, you can put it over here. You do want to sand it down because there's a lot of thorns on it, splinters. So sand it to be smooth. Okay, you can paint it any way you want. Okay, I did glue before the nail. All right, you're gonna make two of these. Now when you're putting this together, it's so important to have these two pieces absolutely level. Now I'm gonna try and hold this up with, uh, with one finger and put the level over here and show you that uh, the bubble's in the middle. And that's what you wanna do. The whole piece of wood probably won't be level, so if you're way over here, it'll probably be off a little bit. So have the, have the level all the way over providing your garage is level and uh, and you'll see it's good. So now on all the, the other side needs to be put on. It is okay to pre-tap your nails in the drill drilled holes. It makes it a lot easier. Then the wood sometimes on the smaller one will split, just put it together with glue, put some glue in the in the cracks and it'll hold. Alright here's an idea for you. After you um, get this all set up, move your chop saw to one side and make sure that the piece of wood is along the rails and you'll see that there's a gap here and by chance is a perfect one and a half inch gap alright so you can cut uh, cut to your lowest one or cut a piece down here I just mark right there cut it and uh, you can glue it right in the spot don't glue it on the wood obviously but you can clamp it down glue it in there and um, it'll give you a little bit more stability uh, as far as lining up your wood you could do it on your bench or off the bench. Glue and clamp and let it sit overnight if you want. Okay, and uh, what I'm probably going to do next is uh, put handles at least on top of this one or something on top. You can grab both these sides to just pull it up if you need to. I'm, I might not even worry about that. This just tells me I made this like this so I can know one can go on one side and go another. It doesn't really matter. They fit all over, all over the place. Well, there it is. The final, the final video. Okay, I made a new horse. I'm going to show you how to put one of these together uh, with the next kit. I definitely need to read the instructions in order to supplies. Um, I'm going to make a parts list, uh, add it to the front of this, and you should uh, print that out probably. Um, so uh, what I did is I uh, added those. Okay, it gives some, uh, some uh, gap in there, something to go up against to help keep it uh, as straight as possible on this. And who can't use, you know, eight feet of, uh, of help if you have this all the way over here with your big pieces of wood going out that way. I think this is uh, such a really cool idea. I think my friend Scott, who made the original one but uh, didn't put it on YouTube and wasn't worried about it, so he gave me permission to make it and take all the credit for it. So I, I want to plug his name in there. Thank you, Scott. All right, so uh, subscribe and see a lot more. I'm going to show you how to do this and uh, a bunch of other stuff with this. Hey, easy storage too. Take a look. It's on one of those uh, one of those little single hooks there. Okay, and uh, and there's the uh, chop saw with the ends.